um, I am on the the Ashokan Rail Trail in Boysville, New York. This is my, my dog Zena. This is going to be a slightly different vid video. You'll see I'm not in New York City. I'm not in any anywhere ur urban. But today we are exploring the remnants of, 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 of a railroad that changed this region, the Ulster and Delaware Railroad. So without any further ado, let's cut to the history section and I'll see you somewhere. The Ulster and Delaware Railroad, despite its eventual fate, never was actually intended to connect the resorts in the Catskills. Instead, as with many railroads built in the later half of the 19th century, it connected port cities. In this case, the port cities were Roundout, now called Kingston on the Hudson River, and Oneonta on the Susquehanna River. Operation started on what was then called the Roundout and Oswego in 1869, running from Kingston to Shogun, but extensions were quickly built to Venetia in 1870, Arkville in 1871, and Roxbury in early 1872. The railroad started out as a booming business, with traffic mainly connecting from steamboats and other railroads in Kingston. However, construction past the new terminus in Roxbury proved difficult. By late 1872, the railroad had been extended to the village of Stamford, but, but construction woes past there caused the company to go bankrupt twice, in 1872 and 1875. However, the railroad still had booming traffic, so the extension to Oneonta was put on hold and the company reorganized into the Ulster and Delaware Railroad. Soon after this reorganization, in 1881, the Ulster and Delaware started construction on a line meant to compete with the already extant railroads to the area of Catterskill. This new branch traveled through the Stony Clove Notch to Catterskill Junction before splitting in two and running to Hunter and Catterskill, both sites of fancy resorts. This branch also had some freight in industries along it, contributing to its success. In 1907, the main line had to be rerouted due to, due to the construction of the Ashokan Reservoir. Remember this, you'll be seeing it soon. Even with this reroute, by the 1910s, the railroad was booming, with over 600,000 people carried on the railroad per year. But by the 1920s, the line was slowing down, and in 1932, the New York Central purchased the now failing Ulster and Delaware. Service continued at its current levels for a bit, but before long, service was cut, and this caused an economic downturn in the region. By the early 1950s, there was only one train a day, six days a week, and on March 31st, 1954, service ended. So now, let's cut to me exploring the line at the Ashokan Reservoir. Um, this is the history poster about the Isthmus. Okay, a bit of context here because I forgot to put the context in. The Isthmus is a stretch of land that was built for the Ulster and Delaware when it was rerouted from under the reservoir to above the reservoir and still happens to be on the rail trail. So back to that cool poster. Uh, pause if you'd like to read it more. But as you can see, there were one, two, three, four, five stations under the reservoir that were then replaced by two at Ashokan and uh, West Hurley, which is which is at the Woodstock Dyke in 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 West Hurley. This 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 is my, my dog being very funny. Um, and yeah, so this is a map of the original route, which then actually went to the other side of the of, of the creek and then crossed it again to merge. So yeah, um, that is the story of the um, of, 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 of the switching from the under the reservoir route to the over the reservoir route. And now I'll see you guys at the Boiseville Bridge, just a bit up that way. Hello, uh, we're now at the Boiseville Bridge over the Esopus Creek. This creek is a, um, is a, it, it's a, it's a really important source of, like, well, it's, it's, it, it's a really important waterway in, the, in this area. It drains a huge amount of, of the Catskills. Oh, up there is Samuel's Point, um, a mountain, and it's not a 3,500 foot, foot or but it is still a pretty impressive mountain. Um, this here, of course, this bridge is not or, or, original. This was built for the rail trail. However, just a bit down there 
is where the original route, uh, which is currently under the reservoir, diverged from the new route. Of course, as you heard in the history section, the reservoir was built in the early 1900s, man-made, it's drinking water for New York City. And the towns that were under there, including the, the, the railroad stations, the surf zone were raised and moved to the banks. Um, so yeah, and, and then that, that, that was the, the, the new ride. Anyway. So this is the Boy, Boyceville Bridge. Of course, not ori original, but, but still cool. So yeah, we, we just talked about the Boyceville Bridge, which is right here. This is the um, history thingy about the Boyceville trestle. Of course, it collapsed. Um, it collapsed uh, during Hurricane Irene in 2011. Uh, and then they rebuilt it. Um, built in 2019. And it's 60 feet longer. And so you can of course, you, you, you can see that by the modern design and also the um, modern concrete pillars. But yeah, this is the same location as the Boyceville Trestle, and that I did a picture circa 1910. So, yeah, and, and this is, of course, the Boyceville Station circa 1910. I think I'll put it in the text box if I'm wrong here, but I think this is the Boyceville Station before the reservoir got, got built. Because if I, if I remember correctly, the Coldbrook Station, which you will see uh, next, is the station that replaced the Boyceville Station once the reservoir got, got built. So, so yeah, that is the bit about the Boy Civil Bridge. Um, enjoy this scenery, and I'll see you at Coldbrook. Hello, and welcome to the abandoned Coldbrook train station. Um, I have driven here from, um, well, from the Boy Civil Bridge, which should have been the last clip. If it's not, this is going to be a really weird intro. But uh, yeah, this is now uh, apparently a private residence or some sort. Uh, it actually appears to be a Ron and Gun club because Merca. And, and anyhow, these are the original tracks of the um, Ulster and Delaware Railroad. You, you can see they're not in great condition. Um, but these are original and they are, um, they are, um, they were used as part of the Cats, Cats, Cats Commander Railway Tourist Railroad. Uh, for a while, although that now is cut back to roughly West Hurley. I'm not sure the exact uh, operating rail end point, but I'll put that in the text box. So yeah, this is the aban abandoned station. This is original to when it was built. The station was built to replace the old Boyceville station um, after the line, of course, got rerouted. Um, but yeah, this is this is the abandoned Coldbrook station. Uh, it is mostly original, of course, that wire is not or original and there are there are some modern features but yeah um coldbrook station in just uh, on the back road next to this cool 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 creek so um i will take some pictures which will probably be in the thumbnail and i will see you tomorrow um on the uh, other branch of this line at haynes falls station so cut to there and by the power of editing, it is now the next day. I am notably not at an abandoned station. I am rather in the middle of a forest with my dog and my mom, who is filming this. Um, however, uh, let's cut to some history about about this this branch line, and I will see you, like I think that way, at the Haynes Falls abandoned train station. Bye. You already heard the history about this in the main history section, so see you at the Haynes Falls Station. Alright, so this is the abandoned Haynes Falls Station, just off the Cadeter Skill Rail Trail in Haynes Falls, New York. There, there's a display track being built. That, that track was donated from the Ulster and Delaware Railroad Historical Society um, to build a display track here. But this is the original station. And because his track is here, we can see there used to be a platform here. The tracks would go down there. Um, as you heard in the history section, this line, uh, it has a bunch of names. I call it the Carter Disco Branch. Um, started with a branch off the main line at Phoenicia. Went up through on the right way of what's now Route 214. And then up through Tannersville here. And then ending in, um, ending at what's now... Uh, part of the North South Lake camp campground, but was then um, a very prime vacation destination area with um, both the Catskill Mountain Hotel and the Catskill Hotel. So looking inside, it's not appear to be 
very original. Looks to be someone's. It looks to be um, maybe someone's house. I'm, I'm not sure. But the actual station, the ar the architecture, is very much original. This is owned by the Mountaintop Historical Society, which is a local historical society, of course. Um, and yeah, here here it is. So this is Haynes Falls Station. This is the last station on the branch before it went down to what's now the North South Lake Campground and the and what used to be those two hotels. Uh, and you can actually hike to the, the hotels. Um, I'll put a picture up of some views from there. So yeah, that is the Haynes Falls train station. And that was exploring the remnants of the Ulster and Delaware Railroad. Thank you very much for, for watching. I hope you enjoyed watch watching. My next vi vi video will be more New York City. All right, bye-bye.